Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, in the very first lecture, which was given by Dr. Pohekar, sir, uh, he told about the various attributes, various other qualities that are required uh, in order to carry out a PhD work, right? So, I am going to take that level zero lecture to level one, that uh, what are the various considerations during the doctoral journey. So, uh, we have identified some of them, which are very, very essential. Like you can see uh, that I am going to cover like uh, what is a conceptual framework during the uh, PhD journey. Uh, basically, the various competencies that are required. Then uh, uh, the twin journey, okay, process of selection of uh, PhD topic, finalizing the title, uh, some aspects of ethics and human values. Okay, then record keeping, importance of raw data, handling scientific instruments, equipments, uh, interaction with role models, frugal innovation, use of controls, right? Learning scientific writing and presentation skill, learning IT skills and right use of statistics, and a metacognitive scaffolding uh, a framework that is there. Okay. Now see, uh, I believe that many of them, uh, those who are sitting here, hearing to me, they are the PhD students. And uh, it is a pretty long journey, okay, roughly around four to five years, right? And uh, uh, in this four to five years, you will find that four to five years, it means that everything, it goes right. Otherwise, it might get extended, right? So this is a very beautiful framework, which is given by uh, Elliot in 2020, a very recent framework about the competency level, right? And it is called as a conceptual framework of a formal and hidden curricula within, sorry for this spelling mistake, it should be within doctoral education using four stages of competence, right? And here you can see this particular kind of a framework, right? Now see, in the uh, P uh, understand that PhD journey, it is a process. If the process, it goes very well, then you don't have to worry about the fruits that you are going to, uh, the benefits that you are going to get. As Krishna has said that karma karo, fal ki apeksha mat karo, right? But uh, that karma, it has, so the karma is very, very relatively difficult as compared to UG, PG and other kind of a degrees here. So you will find that uh, the PhD student, he undergoes through all these particular kind of areas of support, academic, emotional, social, psychological, and other kind of things. But the more important thing is that these stages of competencies, okay, unconscious incompetence, then conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and then unconscious competence, right? When a PhD student takes the admission for the PhD uh, program, he undergoes, the first stage is this unconscious incompetence, okay? He is unaware that he doesn't know anything. That is the first stage, right? Because see, when you join a PhD program, it is only after completion of your postgraduate program, right? And uh, those who have listened to my earlier lectures, I normally show one, one of the very beautiful diagram, how to reach to the edge of the knowledge, right? And in that particular kind of a figure, I sh normally show that in spite of the fact that you have completed your uh, master's degree, you have not reached to the edge of the knowledge because there is a huge gap between the edge of the knowledge and your master's degree. So many times the postgraduate students, they have a wrong impression that they have a good piece of knowledge. But the moment they take the admission, they go through this first kind of a unconscious incompetence. Okay, they are unaware that they doesn't know anything. Okay, and Roughly around after one year or so, they realize that they, they fall into the second stage that is conscious incompetence. They come to know that yes, they are aware now that they doesn't know anything. Okay, that is the second important step. And then after knowing that, then they really go ahead with the PhD. So if you see in a graphical pattern, which I have not shown here, okay, always there is a certain kind of a lag phase. Okay, so I will show you just by my hands, I can show you. Lag phase, then there is a logarithmic phase, 
then there is a stationary phase and there is a decline phase. Forget about the decline phase. But for every PhD study or a PhD program, you will find that there is a certain kind of a lag phase. And this lag phase, it differs from student to student because every problem, it is a unique kind of a problem that you need to understand, right? And that lag phase, it is normally, in my case, it was two years, right? When I did PhD, I took six years, a long time for PhD work. So first two years was a lag period for me. My maximum work, it happened between third year and fifth year, right? So you will find that this particular kind of a stages of competencies, they differ for every PhD student. It depends upon their topic in which they are doing their research work. And then during the third year, they really start to study. Like what are the lacunas? What you need to understand as far as the research it is concerned? Because research is altogether a different kind of a ball game. Okay, and then by the end of your PhD, you reach to this fourth stage called as unconscious competence. Okay, and normally in most of the bigger laboratories, you will find that the moment you join for your PhD program in that particular kind of a laboratory or that particular kind of a group, the senior PhD student, those who are on the verge of getting their PhD, they guide the newer ones. Okay, the moment you tell them some kind of a problem, immediately that uh, your guide or your peers or their se that senior uh, PhD student, immediately he will tell you the solution for that. That is called to be as an unconscious competence because just the moment you utter a problem and immediately they will tell you that you have done this particular kind of a mistake. And it is necessary for a PhD student to reach to that particular kind of a stage. If you don't reach to that particular stage, it means that you are not eligible to get the PhD work. And many of the philosophers like Aristotle and many others, they have told that if you want to contribute to a particular kind of a field, one should spend 15 years in isolation. Okay, 15 years, minimum 15 years in isolation, right? Now we have many online tools and this, that, so many tools, they are helping us directly, indirectly. So five years is a reasonable time. And then once you reach to this particular kind of a stage, ultimately, that is the final product that you get in the form of a doctoral student, right? So a very beautiful framework, which has been given by Elliot. Now what Berman and Sim 2015, he says that PhD actually it is a twin journey. Okay, do ki journey hoti hai, right? So the facet one, what you learn is the doctoral river research. Okay, what does it mean? Adding disciplinary knowledge to the existing body of knowledge. Okay, that is original research. And that, that is the reason why we always keep saying that you have to contribute uh, a original knowledge to the existing body of knowledge. Okay. So that, that could be the final product. So facet one is doctoral rival kind of a, what kind of a work that you carry out? If, you, if it is a high quality work, then definitely you will end up getting published in a very high quality journals, right? And the second facet that you gain through your PhD journey is the confidence, thought process, analytical power, facing, uh, capable of facing several challenges, acquiring skills. That is a, another important facet that you gain from your overall PAD journey. So these two things, they are very, very important. And therefore you will find that the moment you complete your PhD, your thought process, it completely changes. Okay. Uh, your view, it completely changes as well as tackling the problems and the challenges in your real life, it is concerned. And therefore it is called to be as a twin kind of a journey, right? The next important consideration as far as the PAD is concerned, that how do you select normally uh, or finalize that particular kind of a topic? So I have just shared my experience uh, through this particular kind of a slide and normally you will find that in 80% of the cases, this, this is what it happens, right? It happened in my case as well. So first of all, let us understand what is the difference between a topic and a title. Okay, topic is normally broad or generic in nature with a little specificity. Like I've given an example, like bioremediation of toxic pollutants. Now see, what is the problem with this particular kind of a phrase or a statement? Okay. Bio, it is unclear whether it is a bacteria, whether it is a virus, whether it is a fungi, it is algae or whether it is plants, it is unclear. And how toxic it is, that is also unclear. And the pollutants, which pollutant, it is also unclear here. Okay, but it is specific enough that in which area that you are working. 
Similarly, similar is the case with the circular economy, okay, which is a very hot area in 21st century. So, this is the uh, area in which you are working and then PhD title, it is specific in nature and to the point, which only happens through the literature, right? When you identify the gaps, uh, then uh, formulate the questions and the research, uh, uh, the hypothesis, then only to some extent you can identify a clear cut title of your PhD as such. I have mentioned two of them, like investigations on bacterial detoxification of cyanide from industrial effluent. Assessing the solid waste material from automobile industry for its circular economic potential. Very specific. So you will find that in these two particular titles, all the things, they are very, very clear, very crystal clear and one can understand it very, very easily. Right? As far as deciding the topic it is concerned, it is necessary that a student uh, need to have an intellectual dialogue uh, with the supervisor. So th always there are intellectual dialogues between supervisor and PhD student. And these dialogues, they are not for five minutes or 10 minutes. It is for hours together, right? So whenever any PhD student comes to me, I have minimum a sitting of two hours with him. Okay, not less than that. What the point? So that is there. Broad selection of the probable topics. In my case, what happened was uh, like my guide, he, he gave me four different topics. Now remember, when you join as a PhD student, you doesn't have any kind of a knowledge that what kind of a research it is being going on. But your guide is very, very experienced person, right? He knows what is going on in the world as far as the research area is, uh, research is concerned. So normally he throws some broad topics in front of you, okay? And then he told me that you identify on which you want to work, okay? And then through literature search, reading, thought process, re thinking, rethinking, Okay, identifying gaps, research questions, hypothesis, it leads to the specific title and that is the way how you prepare a research proposal, right? But in spite of the fact that if you prepare, uh, you have prepared a research proposal, over a period of time you will find that probably that proposal uh, uh, might have got changed, many of the objectives they get changed, okay, sometimes the title get tweaked, it depends upon the, what kind of a results that you are obtaining, right? So that is the way how the topic it is being selected. Okay, and it is a very lengthy journey in order to identify the uh, topic. Now in doing so, or it is not only about identifying the topic, but in the entire PhD journey and research work that you are doing, it is necessary for you to adhere to the ethics and the human values. That is very, very crucial. Okay. Otherwise, it will lead to weak or fake research. Weak research will create a weak foundation, base, theory, which will lead to a wrong direction, research into a wrong direction. And many times, knowingly, unknowingly, it has happened uh, uh, in the history of science. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether if you remember that I had told you the story of discovery of N rays, similar to X-rays, okay, in the, early uh, in the early 20th century. Okay. And it led to almost 150 plus publication and ultimately it was found that N rays do not exist. Okay, and that paper it was published in Nature. Okay, right? So, if you do a weak research, then it will lead to waste of resources, time, money, efforts, materials. Okay, so that normally it happens and therefore, one has to focus on good quality research work, which will create a dependable knowledge which will be benefit to the society. So ethics, it is a system conceived by humans without underpinning the role of divinity it plays. Here comes the God. Okay, many people, they believe in God. Some, some, many people, they doesn't believe in the God. Because unless and until you see, you will not believe. But there are also other aspects that you first of all believe and then see the results. Okay, right? So that comes into the picture there. So when you talk about ethics, Ethical behavior is doing the right thing when nobody else is watching. And there is one story about uh, the statue of God. There was one king long time back and uh, he, to uh, he, he called upon one of the sculpture and he told him that you prepare one of the statues because there was a hilly area and just adjacent to that particular kind of a area, you prepare one statue of a one saint, right? And then that sculpture, he start, uh, uh, that person, he started making that particular kind of a statue and the front 
part was over and he started working on the back part and one day one fine day a king went to him so why you are focusing on the back part anyway nobody is going to look into that okay because the back side of the that particular kind of a statue it was facing that particular kind of a mountain so anyway nobody was supposed to look at look at that only front front part was very very important so the sculpture gave the answer that no if people they are not seeing but god is looking into that okay so that is the meaning here ethical behavior is doing the right thing when nobody else is watching because god is watching got the point right so what in case of ethics and human values we imbibe the characteristics of the god okay whether you believe on god or whether you don't believe or normally you say that this x y z person he is a god like person it means that he has good characteristics and same values are to be followed in the research work as well like love truth right actions loyalty non violence peace okay and all these particular and there are many sub values as well right and a lot of plagiarism copying stealing fabricating falsifying it has started happening uh, for last 30 to 40 years because of many online tools which has come in the recent times right and therefore originality is the undetectable plagiarism and you should be very very honest in all aspects of your research work right this is a area where we are very very poor record keeping okay right you have to maintain the laboratory record book or field record book those who are working in the field of management or social sciences because for them the laboratory is nothing but the field okay and those who are from the stem area they are working in the laboratories so re record keeping is very very important uh, kind of a aspect for your research work without record book i never entertain my phd student okay that is a policy that i follow whatever they think whatever they read whatever they plan whatever results that they get everything it should be maintained in a physical record book now you may ask me a question when you have a computers okay you have ms office and other kind of why one should maintain the laboratory record book you will not believe nowadays journals they have started asking for raw data from the authors in that particular case in order to prove that you have carried out that particular kind of a work it is necessary for you all to maintain the record book and these are some of the advantages okay right i have listed many of them it is like your researcher's diary okay uh so whatever mental activities physical activities experimental things that are there you have to mention in that particular kind of a record book uh it promotes accountability as well as integrity in the research at the same point of time right uh so the record should be complete accurate understandable and many times if at all you fail in a particular kind of a experiment you can go back and understand why this experiment it failed okay so the record book in that particular case it helps you a lot and if there is a potential of filing a patent later on or transfer of a technology in those particular cases you will find that all these particular kind of a record books are being sealed by the organization those who are uh, to whom you have licensed your patent okay so remember it is a very serious kind of activity okay so never under underestimate that then importance of raw data okay raw data collected through lab and field experiments uh, then raw data converted uh, normally this is what it happens in case of research work raw data it is converted or transformed to meaningful way by analyzing it right and then you generate a relevant facts and you make a decision based upon those particular kind of a facts okay so a uh, lot of attention has to be paid to uh, while collecting the data okay and for that planning is very very important there is one anecdote of einstein uh, once uh, a person asked einstein that suppose if i give you a very complex problem to solve and give you one hour right so how you will manage that one hour to solve that particular kind of a complex mathematical problem so einstein told him that i will think for 55 minutes first 55 minutes and then solve that particular problem in next 5 minutes okay so in research planning is the key see if you do a fantastic planning literature search identifying robust gaps okay uh, 
uh, formulating research question and hypothesis and good research research design your half work is already done okay actual research karna then it is very very what you can say it is a very simple job right right so raw data it helps in many ways understanding the errors that is very important okay and remember research is doing something new so you never knew what 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 is going to happen uh, so understanding errors done provided uh, it is recorded in the record book rectifying the errors in the experiments journal requirement before publication so all these things they are required and therefore uh, never never underestimate or overlook the raw data as such handling scientific instruments and equipments okay you need to understand that uh, during your phd journey you will uh, handle large number of tools techniques instruments equipments etc etc but you need to also understand that you are not clerk or a simple operator okay right you are a thinker you have to uh, uh, you have to think over it and therefore whenever you use any kind of a instrument equipment or a tool whatever it is you should know the principle scientific working of it its operation components other functions is applications okay and how that particular kind of a instrument it could be used what are the various applications how it could be used from the different uh, way etc etc so all these things they are necessary same is, same is the case with the various tools techniques and softwares that social science and management students that they are using like spss okay so it helps you so whenever you are using any kind of a tool technique or any kind of a method reproducibility of the analytical result is very very important okay i remember one of the student he came that when i have used 35 as a sample size i got a different result and when i use 83 as a sample sample size i got a different kind of a result so i thought i told him that your experiment is completely wrong both the experiments right the sample size it should uh, sample what is sample altitude it should be a true representation of the overall population whether you take 10 sample or 1000 sample your results should be same in that particular case right so handling the instruments uh, with utmost care is very very important i remember that we were using atomic absorption spectroscopy during my phd work and uh, accidentally one small part it got uh, damaged and we had to wait for 6 months in order to get that instrument repaired so one should use this particular high, high end instrument with very very uh, utmost care because it has a very high cost maintaining the log book for the instruments and other kind of a uh, 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 equipments it is very very necessary right developmental of experimental skills right remember research it is you never carry out research in a single discipline okay always there are several so this is a, this is a room and you will find there are several windows and doors there right you never know that at which juncture you will get Uh, uh, across with some other kind of a discipline so research it is normally multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary in nature and therefore knowledge of allied areas it is essential you cannot say that that particular kind of a area is it is it doesn't come under my domain the moment you come across a engineering terminology or a biological terminology uh, or maybe a management terminology in the research paper immediately uh, you get disturbed okay now what do you mean by that you need to understand as a research student that is very very important right so uh, i remember that uh, during my uh, when i was doing my research work uh, almost for first 6 months i was developing the skill sets i was using different techniques okay because my background was never a microbiology but i happened to end up getting admission into a microbiology laboratory directly for phd right and my tvc total viable count this is one of the technique which is being used in microbiology and i was not good at it right and continuously for 2 to 3 months i was doing this in my laboratory till i get a consistent kind of a results right so uh, my result what included microbiology biotechnology chemistry engineering and all the different kind of a disciplines and it might happen with you as well so never underestimate the other kind of a uh, uh, subjects right also identify role models in your area okay i have mentioned several role models and everyone has got a role model okay 
everyone loves chatrapati shivaji maharaj because uh, a warrior then amitabh bachchan pm modi ji pele einstein okay these are some of the role models that are there the domain in which you are doing your research work you have to identify role models in your area as well okay because understand that your thesis is because that person who is the role model in your area he is going to act as an examiner for your phd thesis or probably while submitting a, after submitting a manuscript probably your manuscript will go to that particular person only right you should be ready for that right and therefore these role models they may act as a phd thesis examiners reviewers of your paper etc etc okay identify top notch journals so in every aspect of the research work identify some kind of a role model that is very very important and uh, it gives you a lot of motivation and inspiration in order to go ahead right frugal innovation right this is a very important area frugal it means that uh, you find out some kind of a innovative way a low cost way to do a particular kind of a exercise or experiment right and in research it is very very essential for the students to do frugal innovation when there are no resources now my 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 research work was completely hardcore scientific laboratory work and i did frugal innovation on three cases i designed and developed a rotating biological contactor at that point of time because that time it was costing something around 25 to 30000 and we were not having that much amount of funds so i created that in just 500 rupees okay then uh, this was a bio biochemical oxygen demand okay we uh, in one of the laboratories there was no incubator so we created the conditions in the laboratory by taking stool and gunny bags creating a 22 degree uh, temperature and we use a pressure cooker to uh, to analyze cod okay so this is the system which i had developed during my phd it took me 6 months to design and develop this and here you can see this particular kind of a reactor this is a milk tray okay uh, where all the milk bags are kept and uh, in any grocery shop i brought a polypropylene disc and then you can see Uh, that these are uh, these disc. Uh, this is a microbial growth on this uh, this particular kind of a disc. You can see a slimy growth there. Okay, I use the sewing machine ka wadi. What it is in Marathi, it is called that that particular string to run this motor. Fortunately, I was lucky enough to get this particular motor from one of the fermenters in our laboratory. This is a waste water, and uh, I collected the data almost for one year on this particular kind of a. equipment which i do so this was a frugal innovation that i carried out during my phd work right this these are the another things that which i have done which already i have told you right use of controls in scientific experiments that is very very essential because unless and until you you use control you cannot prove the data that you have generated through your experiments and therefore you have to use the controls okay this is a very uh, very much a gray area for most of the researchers and my very first publication got rejected because of uh, insufficient controls right so controls uh, like control variable and control group that normally we used okay which is very very indispensable right and it acts as a reference point or a benchmark uh, when you compare with the test results and that is the reason why one has to use the controls like uh, positive controls are there negative controls are there controls at the various step of the experimentation because you have to prove the fact that or the data that you are generating okay for that you need to have a controls otherwise uh, you have to face lot of rejections in that particular case right learning scientific writing and presentation skill the only answer to this particular question is that you have to read read and read large number of good quality research papers that are indexed in scopus and web of science unless and until you read see how they have written the papers you cannot develop this particular kind of a skill okay that is the only short answer for this particular kind of a questions right learning it skills i think most of them they are aware of uh, ms word and powerpoint and many other things but the tools that are very very relevant uh, pertaining to your research work at the same time so i have mentioned some of them here right so with this i will end uh, like uh, this is a meta cognitive scaffolding for navigating doctoral progression in 360 degrees which is given by elio 2022 and here you can see uh, that north west east so it is 360 degrees normally that what we say in uh, management 
so doctoral development journey identity formation then personal growth okay these are various characteristics and qualities that get developed over the uh, phd journey so twin doctoral journey okay threshold concepts okay and through this per so you should imbibe all these particular qualities into you during your entire phd journey then and then only you will become a very robust kind of a fellow to face any kind of a challenges that you come across right with that i will conclude my talk thank you very much